Welcome back to part two of the basics training for Milestones Professional 2021. I'm Dan Elder from Kidasa Software. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, in part one, we covered the layout tab, uh, the dates tab, date related settings, date headings, um, the format tab, you know, color themes, default text, and so on. And finally, the insert tab, where we inserted a title, uh, some columns, a uh, picture. And now we're going to start talking about the toolbox, which is the thing on the right side of the screen with all the symbols and bars that you can modify. Before we start modifying the symbols and bars, uh, let me talk about a few different options with the toolbox. So if I right click on the toolbox, I can go to Toolbox Properties. And right now I've got double the toolbox display size. Um, you can see a little example of what the normal toolbox looks like without doubling it. Um, I like to have it doubled um, just so I can see the symbols and bars a little bit easier. Um, so you can choose that and restart milestones if you want to. Um, you can also change the number of symbols and bars that you're showing. Uh, I like to change it to eight for the rows and then for the vertical link rows, I'll change it to one. So uh, symbol bar, symbol combinations, um, that's kind of the top part of the toolbox. And then vertical links are gonna be down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna press okay. And then you can see the toolbox looks a little bit simpler uh, now. And you'll also see as I hover over different symbols, um, it's gonna give me a tool tip for that. And also for all these tools up here, um, if you don't want to see those tooltips, you can just right click on the toolbox and choose turn off tooltips. And now you can see my mouse doesn't have those tooltips. As far as the tools on the toolbox, you've got the plus tool. Um, so that's going to be used for adding a single symbol or connecting uh, two symbols with a bar or a vertical link. So if I have a symbol selected with the large plus tool, I can move my mouse over to a row and then click on that row and drag. And then as I release my mouse, it's going to add that symbol. So if I do that again here, you can see it gets added right there. Um, you can also add a symbol from an existing symbol. So if I click on this finish symbol and I've got that bar selected, um, I can actually click on the symbol and drag and it'll add uh, that symbol with that bar. So for instance, if I had chosen this symbol and this bar, I can click on this existing symbol and drag. It kind of shows you the duration there as well. And then I can release. Um, so that's the large plus tool. Um, you can also use that to connect with vertical links, which I'll kind of go over a little bit later. The arrow tool is used for moving symbols or bars. So if I just click and drag on a symbol, you can see that symbol moves using the arrow tool. If you had the plus tool selected, it would be adding extra symbols. So just be aware of what symbol you've got selected up there uh, or what tool you've got selected up there. Um, the T tool, uh, that's gonna be used uh, in a couple ways. So you can add freeform text. So you can just click anywhere on your schedule and just uh, kind of write some text. And you can use the arrow tool to kind of move it around if you want to. And you can also see in the selection tab, you can modify, um, you know, the font size, uh, the font color, if you want to. Just keep in mind with freeform text, it's not actually tied to a date or anything like that. Um, it is just going to be a position on the screen. Uh, so keep that in mind. You've also got the um, shape tools down here which function pretty much like freeform text. You can just kind of draw them anywhere you want to. So if you wanted to um, you know, draw a box around some uh, certain tasks and maybe draw an arrow to there, you can actually use the line tool um, to do that um, in conjunction with the T tool. So if you wanted to kind of point out something on your schedule, um, if you actually click on the line, you can change the end to be an arrowhead so I'll just change it like that. And then you can see it's kind of pointing to 
um, these tasks. Uh, but again, it's not tied to a date or anything. So if these tasks move, you'll need to kind of move your box and move your text and everything. All right, so I'm just going to delete these uh, shapes, this box, um, just by clicking and then uh, pressing delete on my keyboard. Okay, so let's start modifying the actual toolbox itself, these symbols and bars. Um, so like I said before, each of these little spots can be modified. So the start symbol, the bar, and the finish symbol. So if I double click on this start symbol right here, on the toolbox, um, then I get the symbol options dialog. And on the symbol options dialog, you can see you've got a few different tabs. We'll talk about the symbol shape, color pattern, size, shadow, and then text and date properties. Uh, so we'll talk about all three of these tabs right now. The uh, symbol shape tab has the shape as well as what type of symbol it is. So for the shape, you can see we have um, up to 147 different symbols uh, with version 2021. Um, so you can just pick a shape. I'll just change this to a square, for instance. Um, the 3D look, that's going to be kind of the uh, symbol highlight um, that kind of shows you a gradient. Um, not all of the shapes support that, but some of them um, allow you to have kind of a 3D look, uh, which gives you a little kind of 3D gradient on the symbol. And for the type of symbol, you've got normal symbols. Uh, most of your start dates and finish dates um, are going to be normal symbols, um, as well as you know milestone dates, etc. Um, unless they represent baseline tasks, uh, in which case they would be a baseline symbol. Uh, we also have a status symbol, um, and usually you're just going to have one status symbol on a row, and that is going to set the status date for that row. Um, and usually the status symbol is going to be an invisible symbol, so you don't actually see the shape um, <clears throat> on your schedule there. And then finally you have a comment symbol, and you're only going to use a comment symbol if you just want to have a shape on your schedule, and it's not going to be tied to any of these uh, you know, start date or end date or baseline start or baseline end columns. So that's pretty much it for the symbol shape tab. Um, all I did was change the uh, shape here. I'm going to go to color pattern, size, shadow, and you can kind of change, um, you can see the line pattern, that's kind of the outline for the symbol, um, and you can see those changes take place on the sample symbol up here. So if you wanted to have a different fill color, I'm going to change this one to be green. And then you can see the fill pattern. Um, if you want like a stripey uh, fill pattern in there, I'm just going to keep it solid. And you can also do a marking so you can change the mark color and also change what the mark looks like. It's just a way to make the symbol a little bit more unique. So you could put, um, you know, like a circle around it if you have multiple squares and you want this one to look different. Um, or maybe a big X might represent, you know, a canceled uh, milestone or something like that. Um, I'm just going to set that to none. And then you've also got the after status color. Um, so if you're showing, uh, you know, before status and after status colors on your schedule, uh, which I'll show you after we, um, after we change these uh, colors, um, then you can actually uh, sh change the color that it's going to be after the status date. So for instance, I'm going to just change this to lime, lime or light green. Um, <clears throat> so it's going to be uh, the solid uh, dark green whenever it's complete, and it's going to be a lighter green until it is complete. So if it's incomplete, it's going to be this lighter green. Uh, the default is just to use white um, with this default template. Uh, but I'll just change it to a lighter version of this color. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to go to text and date properties. And you can kind of see as I change these options how this default uh, text placement changes in that sample symbol. Same thing with the date placement. Um, I'm just going to keep these kind of as the default. And then you've also got symbol position. So whenever I add this symbol to the schedule, um, you can see right now that it's just going vertically in the middle of the uh, row there, but you can also change it to be, you know, one level up or one level down. Maybe you want the baseline task to be lower than a normal task, in which case you would set that to be, you know, one level down. I'll just kind of keep it middle of row for now. And then I'm going to press OK. 
and then you can see that uh, those symbols got changed. I'm going to do the same thing with the finish symbol just really quick. Um, I'm going to double click on this finish symbol on the toolbox and then I'll go to um, number six. I'll just kind of choose the same options that I just did so I'll change it to a square. I'll change the fill color to dark green and then the after status to that lime. That looks pretty good. I'll press OK. So um, you can see these are not lime on here uh, because we have that setting turned off in the toolbox. Um, but if I wanted to turn that back on, I could go to the Dates tab. And you can see symbols fill the status and bars fill the status. Uh, so for, the, for those symbols, I can just click on that. And then you can see if they're incomplete, they're using that lime color. Uh, same thing with bars. I'm going to click on that. Uh, we're about to change a bar on the toolbox. So I'll just go ahead and check that one ahead of time so we can see the difference there. Now to modify the bar, I'm going to double click on the center of the, uh, the row here, and then I'll get the bar options. So if I change this to maybe a thicker bar, um, like this one right here, you can see I can also change the uh, before status and after status color. So I'm just going to change it to the same colors as this to kind of match the symbols. So before status will be green and after status will be that lime color. Um, most of the bars are going to have this, you know, before status, after status color. Uh, but some of our newer bars, for instance, like number 65, it has a main bar and a progress portion color. So you can kind of see the difference there. So if I go to 67, it's kind of the same thing. It's got the progress portion on the inside. And same thing with 72. Uh, so those are some some differences uh, with some of the newer bars. Uh, but if I uh, just change this back to bar type number two, it'll be a little bit thicker, and it'll have that green and then the lime for the after status. I'm going to press OK. And then you can see that uh, took effect there. So you've got the dark green and then the lime for the incomplete. OK, so now that we've modified something on the toolbox, um, what we're going to do next is build a little example schedule and then I'll start talking about uh, summary levels and uh, symbol text and stuff like that. So first I'm going to delete this information that's already on the schedule so you can either go symbol by symbol just press delete on your keyboard just kind of select it with your mouse and press delete. You can also delete entire rows um, just by clicking on the row and pressing delete. Make sure you click inside a column here. So I'll just press delete on my keyboard and delete and delete. So now I've got kind of a blank schedule. And I'm also going to delete some extra columns so I don't need this extra column right here or this baseline start. Just click on that and press delete on my keyboard again. And there we go. Uh, I'm going to use the T tool. Um, so besides freeform text, you can also use the T tool to click inside a cell and then uh, type directly into that cell. So I'll say project one, click in this cell, task one, task two, and then I'll do the same thing, uh, project two, say task one and task two. Now I'm going to change the outline level of these rows. So I'm going to use my arrow tool on the toolbox. And if I just click inside a cell, it should select that whole row right there. And then in the selection tab up top, you can see outline level. Currently, these are all set to one, which is kind of the default. So I'll set this to outline level two, and also task two. And you can select multiple rows at the same time. Again, just holding shift or control and change those to two as well. So now any tasks that I draw on uh, task one or task two are gonna be uh, automatically summarized in this project one row. And same thing for uh, these two tasks down here, they're gonna be uh, summarized in project two. So I'm gonna use um, the second row in the toolbox that we kind of uh, modified. 
and select the small plus tool. So when I have my mouse um, over one of these uh, rows, you can kind of see it shows a date. So that's where your start symbol is going to go. So if you click and drag, I'm going to click and drag, you can kind of see uh, the summary bar already getting automatically drawn. Um, I'm just going to release this one uh, kind of in the future there. And same thing for task two, I'll just click and drag and release. And then you can see a summary bar automatically gets drawn right there. Um, since this project one is outline level one. Same thing with uh, project two, I'll just click and drag, and then click and drag. And then you can see those uh, bars and symbols get added and everything gets summarized on that summary level. So if you wanna modify <clears throat> the summary level, you go to the layout tab and there's an option right here for summary bar settings. And on summary bar settings, you can see there's um, a few different things you can do. So when to draw, if I set that to never, then it's actually going to get rid of that summary bar. And then you can just draw your own summary bar um, if you wanna do that. Um, if I go back to layout, summary bar settings, um, I can turn that back to always and bring the summary bar back. And there you go. Again, I'm gonna go back to summary bar settings. And you could change um, you know, which row in the toolbox it's using. You can see these um, triangles, that's that first row in the toolbox, and the squares is that second row in the toolbox. Um, you can also just, if you wanted to use that row in the toolbox, you could actually go to the toolbox and just modify you know, what symbols and bars are on that first row, and then the summary bars would be updated automatically. Um, you can also choose this option right here, uh, split summary bars using lower level symbols and bars. And that's actually going to roll the bars up to the summary level. So let me show you what that looks like. So uh, I check split summary bars and press OK. And then you can see these um, summary uh, tasks are now just um, these lower level tasks kind of all grouped together. So it is a mirror image. Um, so probably if your tasks are overlapping, uh, you'd want to actually move those up and down. You can't actually select these symbols or bars on the summary level. You have to select it in the lower level. So just as an example, if I select this start symbol here, I can hold the shift key and then press up or down on the keyboard. So I'm holding shift and pressing up or down on the keyboard arrow keys. And you can see that the summary level is reflecting um, any changes that you make in the lower level. So it is just kind of a mirror image up there on the summary level. Um, so again, I'm gonna select this start symbol here for the second task and hold shift and I'll just press down on the keyboard. Um, so you can kind of see that changes the vertical level. If you wanna see what vertical level this symbol is, um, when you've got a symbol selected, in the selection tab, you should have the size slash color sub tab down here at the bottom. If you click on that, you can see for this symbol that I selected, there's no override. So it's just kind of in the middle, which is the default for that symbol. Um, you can change it here if you want to. So you can see that makes that go one level up, uh, bring it back to the middle, or just get rid of the override and it'll just uh, follow whatever's in the toolbox. Same thing with this bottom one. So this is set to one level down. You can set that back to one level up, one level down, etc. cetera. Um, a good thing to know about this um, option is you can actually change the spacing. So depending on your uh, the size of your rows and the size of your symbols and stuff like that, you might wanna change the spacing. Uh, for example, if I have this set to two levels down, it's actually going outside of the row. Um, so I might want to change that spacing, um, which is an option in the Tools tab. So if I go to the Tools tab, and under Program Options, I can click on Edit. And right now the vertical spacing is 100%, which basically means that it goes an entire symbol height, like a normal symbol height, 
up or down. Um, if you're using you know, smaller bars or smaller symbols, you might not want to move that much. Um, but just as an example, I can change this to 40% for vertical spacing and press OK. And then you can see um, it kind of puts them a little closer together. So now I can hold Shift and kind of move these around more. And I can use more of those vertical levels um, for each row. And in this case, I might want to make my rows bigger or something like that um, to actually utilize all that space. But that's great for um, like if you have a big swim lane where you have you know lots of different levels of activities and you kind of want to space them out um, a little better. Again, that's in the Tools tab under the Edit Options. Okay, let's talk about symbol text. I'm going to use my arrow tool, select a symbol here, and in the Selection tab, I'm going to go over to the Text sub-tab right there, and I can type any text that I want to right here. So just as an example, I'll type simple text, and then there's that little Apply button right there. Just click on that. And then you can see some symbol text gets added right there. Um, so you've got some options with the placement of the symbol text. Uh, you can actually center it on the bar. So you can see that option in the text sub tab, a little checkbox right there. So if you put the text on the start symbol, uh, that's how you center it on a bar. And if you want to change the default location for that text, uh, you can actually do that on the toolbox. So I'm going to double click on that symbol on the toolbox and go to text and date properties. And then you can see right now the text placement default is above and in the center. But if I click on bar, then any text I add to a symbol like that on the schedule will kind of default to that location. So um, I'm going to click on this symbol, for instance, and type uh, some more text. And again, press apply text changes. And then you can see it centers on that bar uh, by default. We also have something called a symbol note, which is an alternative to symbol text. So if I click on a symbol and in the selection tab, go to the notes uh, sub tab there, I can just type a symbol note. And there's a couple things you'll have to do depending on what template you're using. Um, so I'm going to press apply text changes. And you can see there's a little note icon right there. So that's actually this little option right here, highlight symbols with notes. Um, so we can pretty much uncheck that one. And then we're going to check display note on schedule to actually show the note um, on the schedule itself. And then you can see that note is now kind of floating right there. And you can actually click and drag and kind of move that note around. And it will. Um, kind of have a little connector that points to that symbol that it's connected to. Um, and you do have some options with the symbol notes as far as the background color, uh, font, and so on, uh, and the connector. So if I you know, change that connector, um, you can see now it looks like a little, a little chat box type thing coming out of there, or like a thought bubble um, type thing uh, with little circles. Uh, you can also just get rid of the connector if you don't want it. <clears throat> you can also get rid of the background. Um, so under special effects, there's an option for no background uh, transparent. And then you can see that got rid of the background. Um, so it is still connected to that symbol, even though there's no connector. Um, so if I move the symbol, you can see that symbol note also moves, um, which is pretty nice. Um, you can also get rid of the frame. So frame type, uh, set that to none. Um, so that didn't do anything, and it's because the symbol is not actually selected anymore. So you can see in the top left, it says current object symbol, none selected. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that symbol again. Um, so it says one is actually selected. And then, um, and then I'll turn off that frame right there. And that looks pretty good. Um, and you can see it still kind of moves with the symbol and everything. And um, if you add any more symbol notes, uh, for instance, I'm going to add another one right here, um, call that Note 2, apply text changes. Uh, you will have to 
choose those options so like display note on schedule and um, you know if you want them all to look like this um, it's actually faster if you do that in the format tab so instead of going to each symbol individually and changing um, the defaults for those symbol notes you can go to the format tab and choose symbol notes and this is how you actually can modify all the symbol notes as once at once so there's a, a couple options here so I can say display note on schedule um, <clears throat> change the font for instance maybe I want it to be smaller and bold um, I can turn off the connector and I'll turn off the background and turn off the frame for instance and then you have an option to set defaults for new symbols so if I add any symbol notes to any of these symbols um, it'll have all these options um, or I can say change defaults and apply to all symbols on the schedule um, and that'll kind of override these changes I did right here and kind of set the default for all new symbols as well so I'm gonna press uh, this option right here and then you can see that um, symbol note change took place uh, right there so <clears throat> You can see it used the uh, font size and the bold um, that I chose. And you can also, instead of um, clicking and dragging to move the symbol note, you can move them with these little arrows up here in the symbol notes uh, sub tab. So if you want to get kind of an exact placement or something like that, you can do that. And so now if I want to just hide those symbol notes, I can just select um, those symbols and just uncheck display note on schedule. Um, I could also delete the text, but if I do want to keep the symbol note there for later, I can just kind of hide those temporarily. Um, so now I'm going to talk about changing background colors individually of task rows. So you remember in the format tab, horizontal grid lines and shading is kind of how we change the default for the whole schedule. But uh, you can also select an individual row and actually change the default for that row, the background. So under more task row options in the selection tab, there's an option for grid line shade. Um, and you can actually do it with multiple task rows at the same time. Um, I'll just do this project one task row right here. And then I'll show you multiples. So I'm going to turn off the grid lines. I'm going to kind of make project one into one uh, big background color section. And for shading, I'll just choose maybe like a green or something uh, just to show you guys an example of that and press OK. And then you can see that just changed the background uh, just for that single row. Um, so I'm going to do this again a couple times. So I'm actually going to hold uh, either shift or control to select multiple rows. So I'll just select this whole kind of section here and kind of get a swim lane look going. So I'm going to go to <clears throat> In the selection tab uh, more task row options and then grid line shade and I'm going to turn off the grid lines uh, between all these rows so uncheck that and then for the shading I'll just uh, actually make them all kind of a maybe a light green color and yeah that looks good um, and then I'll press OK and then you can see it kind of shaded um, all of those uh, task rows, that kind of light green color. And you can see these light blue lines between each row. Uh, those are actually called line guides. So if I go to the View tab, I can actually turn those off. And line guides are just letting you know that there's a row there. Uh, whenever you print out your uh, schedule or save it to PDF, uh, the line guides don't show up. Um, <clears throat> So it's just kind of letting you know as you edit it that there's a row there. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with project two. So again, hold uh, shift and just kind of select all those tasks. Go to more task row options, grid line slash shade. And I'll uncheck uh, show grid lines. And for this, maybe I'll do like a light blue uh, kind of background color there. That looks pretty good. Press OK. And then you can see it's a nice light blue. Uh, if you wanted to add a line between uh, this swim lane and this swim lane, um, you would do it on the bottom 
of this task row. So I, I can just select this task row individually. Again, more task row options, grid line shade. And I'll just say show grid lines and press OK. And then you can see it added a grid line at the bottom of that uh, swim lane. And if I wanted this, um, this schedule to kind of be uh, expanded down to the bottom here and kind of get rid of these rows. Uh, the best way to do that is in the layout tab. Right now I have eight rows per page. I can just set that to six and apply setting changes. And then there you go, you've got project one and then project two looking good. Now, if I wanted to save this schedule um, to send this milestone schedule to someone, I could go to the File tab <clears throat> and choose Save or Save As, and then click on Chart. So I'm just going to call this um, Schedule, let's see, called Schedule 6, and press Save. And I will overwrite it. That's fine. And so now I can send that uh, .mlj file to someone, and .mlj is for version 2021. Um, if you have an older version, it's going to have a different extension. Um, Milestones is backwards compatible, so you could save as, you know, like version 2019 or 2017. Um, it would uh, lose any features that are only in 2021, for instance, uh, but the schedule itself and all the information should come over to that older uh, file version. You can also save as a PDF. So in the File tab, just click on Save as PDF. So I'll just call this Schedule6.pdf. And then, yeah, sure, I'll view the file. And then you can see it comes over to PDF quite nicely. I'll close that. And you can also save it as a PowerPoint and there's a couple options for getting your information over to PowerPoint. So first of all, you can copy the whole schedule in the Connections tab, copy all pages to PowerPoint. And it's going to ask you if you want to paste it. Um, you can press no to paste it into an existing schedule or yes to just make a new um, presentation. So <clears throat> click on that, then it copied to PowerPoint Let me go ahead and open that. And here's the PowerPoint. Uh, looks pretty good. I'm actually going to delete this um, page right here. But if you did have multiple pages on your schedule, it would come over to multiple slides in PowerPoint. I'm just going to press delete. And I'm actually going to come back to this PowerPoint here in a couple seconds. Um, you also have the option to copy just certain parts of your schedule over to PowerPoint. So for instance, if I wanted to copy uh, just this project one section, I can hold shift or control and kind of select multiple rows there. And in the edit tab, you have this option right here, copy bitmap to clipboard, selected rows. So I'm going to click on that. And then you have the option to copy only the selected rows or the selected rows and the date heading. I'll just say only selected rows. And then it should put it on your uh, clipboard and then I could come back to this PowerPoint and just paste it in there with a uh, control V <clears throat> or you can you know just click on the paste button um, as well and that'll paste it in there um, if I go back I can actually hold control and just select uh, multiple task rows and I'll show you the option with the uh, date headings as well so if I go edit copy bitmap to clipboard selected rows I'll say copy rows and date heading And then I'll go back to PowerPoint and again just press Control V to paste. And then you'll see it copied, you know, task one and task two, and then task one and task two, uh, since that's the tasks that I had selected there. So I'll just close this. Nope. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for the basics of Milestones Professional. Uh, if you need further help, we do have a help tab here. Um, you could download our entire user manual, uh, but what I suggest is going over here on the left side and there's the getting started 
uh, that's like a nice 15 page PDF you can print that out um, you can also check out our tutorials and we have several lessons and you can kind of go through them and they all have uh, some schedules kind of associated with them that you can use um, to kind of learn um, different parts about Milestones Professional. Uh, we also have the help topics right here that kind of opens up your browser and you can uh, see lots of different help topics uh, that we have. We also have some online uh, videos. Uh, if you click on this online movies button, uh, you can kind of see those on our website and it covers lots of topics. Um, you can check all of those out and uh, make sure you, uh, you know, if you're having any bugs or anything like that, you can download and install the latest software update. Uh, we do post regular updates uh, to the software uh, whenever we need to. And if you have any further questions, um, you can actually submit a question through our website um, just by clicking on submit a question. And you can just type your question right there or just email us at support at kidasa.com. Okay, that's pretty much it for the training here. So if you have any more questions or comments, um, you can send those to us at support at kidasa.com. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest updates. Uh, we try to post at least one video per month. Um, otherwise, have a nice day.